everyone. Here I am working on our template and our two column template. If we go to the page and look at it, this doesn't really look much like a two column template. Now does it? So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do three things in this video. We're going to center our wrapper. We're going to create two columns from the page, uh, which is the div called wrapper. Okay. Um, and then we are going to push the footer below that. Oh, I'm sorry, it is from the page. I take that all back. All right, so the first thing we want to do is center the wrapper. So we're going to do that by um, putting in here, we're going to target the wrapper. We're targeting it by class by putting the dot, dot wrapper. Now, this is a really interesting one. What we can do is we set the width, for example. What I like to do is set the width and make it like this is for uh, if we're in a uh, mobile browser. We don't want, um, we want, don't want a lot of space on either side. If we're in a really tight window and we give it something like a width of 90%, um, oh, wait, we're gonna have to link to it. So let's go ahead and set our link tag here. I saved some space, some time by just going ahead and uh, typing it in while you weren't watching. So anyways, there it is, link with the relationship of style sheet, a type of text slash CSS and an href of CSS because that's the folder it's in, slash layout. I'm going to save our changes. Note, um, when we go ahead and launch this again, or hit refresh, let me make sure that's saved and that one is saved. We hit refresh, and not a lot has changed. However, when we tighten it up a little bit, you're going to see on a tight window, there's some margin over here. Well, everything is on the left-hand side. So when we set 94%, there's a 6% margin over here. Well, we want to center that. So in order to center that, um, we're going to set the margins, and we're going to make them automatic on the left and right. We're going to give a value of 0 to begin with. And excuse me, if I do 0 space auto, that is the same as no margin on the top, mo no margin on the bottom, and an automatic left and right, because this is the shorthand. It's the same as putting it as zero auto, zero auto. And whenever we give a value that is related to the box model, which could be margin or padding or even border, we would set the first number we give is always the top, then the right, then the bottom, then the left. Now, notice we're just repeating our pattern here. Well, browsers are set up to recognize the shorthand. So when we do that and we hit refresh, it is now centered. Okay. If you have a mobile device, that's not too shabby, okay? Um, we're not going to do a lot of mobile design just yet. We're going to take this a little bit later and do that. For now, we've just set our, our width, but there's a problem. When we go full size, that is just way too long for paragraphs, even though they're not in a two column yet. So the next thing we want to do is we want to keep it from getting too wide. So by that, we're going to use max width. So it's a maximum width. And on here, we're going to do it as EMs, and we're going to try 50 EMs. And part of this number here has to do with uh, making sure that everything is readable. Now when I hit refresh, notice there's big margins on the left and on the right. We're getting a little bit better. We still don't have our two columns. And so for that, we're going to use this. Now, there are two ways to do two columns. I'm going to start by showing you the old-fashioned way, and then in my tutorial on uh, navbar, I'll show you a newer way to do this. So we're going to go old school here, and first of all, we want to look at our HTML. Now, let's skip the navbar for now. We have uh, on line 23 a div with a class of page. Inside, we have this article with a class of content. Let me take word wrap off. And this was in an earlier tutorial, but you'll note in the class, in the div with the class of page, we have an article and we have an aside. Okay, And so we got all the code that we need. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the article.content and we're just going to set the width and we're going to push it to the left. Now, one of the things that I like to do is make sure I put my content in the order of importance. So content is always more important than sidebar. So I'm going to do an article content first, then sidebar. When you float an item, it's always the first of two items you need to float. And what that does is it pushes it off to the side. However, it's only going to work if we have a width for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the width. No, we're going to set the width. And we're going to give it at 35 EM, which is a definite oh, uh, one recommended way of setting the width. 
and uh, for readability so that uh, we don't have too many characters on any given paragraph. If our paragraph is too wide, and let's take a look at this, too wide, our eye gets sore because we start getting way over here and we kind of forget where to go next. Okay, that's a long way back to the beginning of the next line. So now when we hit it at 35, you'll note it's a little bit shorter, right? But it's not so short that you're having to move your eyes, you know, up and down and that kind of a thing a lot. So this is a general rule of thumb is what people recommend. Uh, once we set the width, you'll note that the sidebar is not because we you see the paragraph on the sidebar. Plus, we still don't have our two columns. So for that, we're going to float it to the left. And we're going to save our changes. Now, at this point, we're going to think, oh, hey, look, everything's great. See, content, sidebar. Uh, we do have one problem. Sidebar is up higher than content. We also have a problem because our unordered list is sticking out to the left. We also have a problem because our footer is actually on the sidebar. We don't want it. We want it on the bottom of everything. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to push our nav bar down. So we're going to do that. Now, I'm not done with the two column, by the way. So we're going to put on here footer.main because that's the class we added on our footer. And we're going to do a thing called clear. Now, if we do clear left, it means clear it of anything that was floated to the left. In other words, put it after the float, and that's what it did. Also, a lot of times, uh, you could do clear left, you could do clear right, or you could do clear both. And that means if anything was floated to the right as well, it also clears that item. And it's, I just do it for a matter of safety. I just, I just make sure I cover my bases there. So this is working seemingly. Okay, it seems like it's good, but what happens if there's just a lot of paragraphs in our sidebar? Save our changes. Hit refresh. Sidebar is looking good until our sidebar goes below the main content. Suddenly, it's total width. It's just as wide as everything else. So what we need to do to be safe, and by the way, I, I don't normally make web pages where I have a sidebar that has that much content, but you never know. You should always play it safe. So we're going to target the sidebar, and that's a side dot sidebar. And on there, we're going to set the margin. We give it a margin left. And so margin left will push it away from the left-hand side of the screen. All we need to do is make sure we have more of a margin left or the same as the content that was floated. So I'm going to give this a 36 EM margin left. Now, the interesting thing about this is it pushes the margin over, but it doesn't really officially tell it how big the sidebar needs to be. And if you look down on here, see the sidebar? Now it lines up just right. We've got a good gutter in between the two columns. And look what happened here. Our unordered list now looks more normal. And so that was good to set that uh, left-hand margin. Uh, there's one more thing I was going to do. Oh, yeah, I was going to remove all those paragraphs that we had on there because, like I said, this is not normal. We don't normally do this. Uh, let's see what that looks like. Hit refresh. A little bit back. we just get rid of one more paragraph, and we'll do that there. I'm going to turn word wrap on. Okay, so we've got all our paragraphs. Great. So at this point, we got our template. Hit refresh. Looking a little bit better, looking a little bit more like a two column. All right, we still have a couple other issues going on here with our margins. And so I'm going to type F12 to show you the, um, the key on here. If I hover on here, notice I have this margin on our content, which also means the top margin of this header, too, is even with the top of this header, which also has a margin. So we're having some problems here with these. So one of the things that we want to do is we want to remove margins that we don't want. Okay. And so we're going to do that with the general style sheet and we'll do some uh, typography and some other things. I think what we'll do is I'll add that now and then um, we'll come back to our typography and other things in just a bit. To do that, first of all, we're going to create a different style sheet. We're going to call it general. I'm going to copy that here, I'm going to paste that here, and I'm going to change the very first one to be general. And this is going to be general styles, and anything we do on here, we want to do this first. 
So things like typography, the fonts, the colors, and the other things, we're going to do it on there. And I'm going to remove the margins and deal with that in that general style sheet. So I'm going to create it and get the first part done, and then I think we'll be ready to move on to working on our uh, navigation bar. Okay, I've taken the liberty to go ahead and create a new file, call it general.css. Here it is. And the first thing we want to do is we want to remove um, all margins. So this is actually a technique a lot of web designers have done, and I won't argue the merits and the pros and the cons. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. There's different ways we can do it. We can try to remove the margins from each individual tag. I like to do the universal selector, but do this with caution. If we remove margin from everything on this universal selector, then it's going to remove it from every tag unless it has set a margin on already. Okay, so on our layout, we set some margins, right? Well, this won't affect that because this is in our general style sheet. It appears first, and this is a more general kind of selector. And so we save our changes. Let's look at the page, what it looks like. Hit refresh, and um, it should get rid of all of that lovely margin there. I think I'm in the wrong folder, or did I not save? Oh, I didn't save my changes on my link. There we go. Bam, everything's all crammed together, right? Well, part of the problem with the universal selector is it removes the ability for what's called um, uh, inheritance. So earlier, if you were to set, for example, the color on the body to green, so you put on here body, and then you put color green. Okay, we have a uh, body tag has every tag that's visible on the page is inside the body tag. So if we change in the body tag to green, everything gets green. That's called inheritance. Okay, We didn't apply it to my headers. We didn't apply it to paragraphs. They didn't apply it to unordered lists. But because they are children of the body tag, they belong to the body tag, then they get changed. Well, in a universal selector, if you do this here, it changes all of them, but it also disables that, um, that inheritance. So what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to target our headers, for example. I'm just going to hit every one that we could possibly have. I'm not, I don't ever usually use a header 5 or 6, but it's always a good to, idea to go ahead and put it in there. Now we're going to add a little bit of top and bottom margin. And Actually, we're not going to do it as margin. We're going to do it as padding. Okay, And it's up to you if you want to do it margin or padding. So we're going to put, uh, I think I'm going to do a 5EM0 uh, and uh, save my changes. And then I'm going to go back here. And at this point, colors are back. Notice there is a little bit more space between our, our, pair, uh, our headers. And that's because of padding. So if we change that to be margin instead, watch what happens. There's a thing called, uh, there's a thing called, um, oh, what's it called? It's collapse, margin collapse. So watch this, I type F12. And I hover over there. That header has a padding. You see that's green, that's padding. That one has some padding there as well. Notice how the padding, they don't go to the next tag. Watch this when I hit refresh. Notice how those two are together. That's because the top margin collapses with the bottom margin of the other. So whichever one is taller, that becomes the margin and the rest gets left alone. Now I'm going to leave that at this. We're just going to leave it here. Actually, we'll probably add a little. We'll do the same thing to our paragraphs. And so I'm just going to copy that. Now I'm going to keep those separate. And the reason, oops, the reason why I'm keeping them separate, headers from paragraphs, is I'm going to add some fonts to the headers later. So I'm going to save my changes. I think we are good to go. I hit refresh. There, my paragraphs have a little extra space. We might adjust that a little bit more later. But for now, I think we're good to go. Okay, in the next tech tutorial, we're going to start covering creating this nav bar. So stay tuned. See you then.